Janet Cage has just released in Mortal Kombat 1, and people are already calling her the hardest cameo in the entire game. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, she is very difficult, but... In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down Janet Cage in a way that's a lot simpler for you to understand. I'm going to try to take her moves and kind of break them down into bite-sized pieces so you understand how to use them, how to utilize them in your matches, and what synergies to use them with with what characters. So for today's video, we'll be doing a dummy's guide to Janet Cage. I hope you enjoy. First off, let's talk about Janet's base cameo move. When you just press the cameo button, she comes out, punches you in the, in the dick, right? Big dick punch. The best way that I found for this to be used is either as a restand combo ender. So let's say they're in the air. You can actually uh, use this to end the combo and they'll get restood. It's pretty decent. Not bad at all. I, I use it every now and then if I just want to get like a throw combo or something towards the end of the round. Another great usage for it is it's actually uh, invulnerable on wake up. It's one of those moves where as you can see right here it says has invulnerability when performed as a get up or reversal. Um, these moves are like... Notori notoriously bad for being wake ups, but I think that this one's actually pretty decent because as you can see here The range is pretty damn far So if you get knocked down around this distance They're sitting back there and you can tell that you can hit them like Janet will hit them before they hit you I would recommend throwing it out there because of how much range it has and it's only minus six on block So you should be good other than that though. This move is just a, a pretty stereotypical cameo move It's it's just it's your wake up tool. It's pretty decent for restands and that's about it Next up, we have the Ninja Mime move right here where you just Janet comes in and just kind of sits here, puts up a fake wall. This move is great for blocking projectiles. If your opponent tries to projectile you, uh, Janet will actually block it. So th this is a great anti-projectile tool. If you're playing someone like Scorpion, you can obviously get a pretty gnarly punish off that. Um, here's, a little, uh, here's a little teaser for what, what else Janet can do. But yeah, Janet has some really great tools for, for all kinds of offense and defense. This move is great for anti-zoning. I mean, if someone's zoning you out, she takes like one or two good hits of damage. Um, depending on the projectile, I think she has like a health point system of like 90 points of health or something. Once she, um, once you bring this out here, you can just kind of back up, be a little bit safer from full screen, hit your projectiles, not get hit by their projectiles. This is a pretty underrated move for Janet, and I think that it's going to be very helpful against zoners. One other usage of this move is actually if you, if you're able to place it down and start hitting them, it acts as like a pseudo corner. So on someone like Quan Chi, where you're, you can, you kind of want them to stay in one spot. You want to get them against the wall, against characters who love being in the corner, like maybe like General Shaw or something. Janet Cage is going to be really hard to deal with. As you can see, he's not even going over her. He's kind of just stuck in this pseudo corner effect here. It's kind of wonky because you can jump over her, but like I said, you can't back up. And because you can't back up, it makes it just a little bit. It makes it just a little bit harder to deal with. Um, and it's it's a pretty decent move in that regard, but. The only issue is the setup to actually set that move up is difficult and you have to like bring it out here, jump over them, push them into the corner. It's not the easiest to set up so I don't find myself using it very often. Next up we have Janet's combo extensions and these are probably the things that make Janet the best. I really do believe that this move is disgusting. I'm using Scorpion as my example. I think the Scorpion is one of the best pairings for Janet and the reason being is this move. This move allows Scorpion to have just ridiculous combos, because now I can combo off of this move into Spear. Um, I, From what I can tell, there isn't a single other cameo in the game that allows me to do that, and it is very nice. I mean, Scorpion's bread and butter combo is doing quite a bit of damage now without any meter. Like, no meter. This is doing 42% without a single bar, one cameo bar. I mean, that's kind of... Dumb, honestly, it's just dumb. That also allows me to combo off of my armor. Um, once again, dumb. It's just gross. And as you can see there, um, actually, you can't see it because I don't have it set up yet. But this is actually only one bar. So, like, I can just do one of these. And then I only used one bar of my cameo. I, it's, it's kind of, I think it's just ridiculous. Because you can, you can technically, if you really wanted to, like if you found the right combo, you could use two of those in the same combo. Um, I could, now if I use a different combo, I could probably keep, keep extending that. But um, the only thing about this move is, 
you can only use the uh, like the triple punch one time in a combo. So when you have that green enhancement, you you get like two extra punches. So you get like one, two, three. So once you get those two enhancements, you only have whatever cameo punch. So you can only get these two in your actual cameo meter. So you can get this one and then the other one. And then you get two additional punches per combo. So it's kind of wonky, it's kind of strange, but you'll get the hang of it when you play it. It's, it's, it feels very smooth and feels very fluid. I've never had a big issue with, with this move. It, it's basically just like a triple Sonya. And the best way to get the triple out consistently is to either find the timing, or if you're like me, and you don't want to do all that bullshit, just spam the hell out of that button. I'm talking, I'm talking spam it. Now, sometimes it doesn't work because I'm bad, but when, when you just spam the hell out of the button, it usually does work. Like, I, I, don't, I haven't found a, a whole lot of issues by just spamming the button. And like I said, this can, this can make you do with a lot of things that you're not able to do before. Like, Scorpion can combo off this low if you time it correctly, which is not, it's not normal. Scorpion is not supposed to be able to do that at all. There we go. Yeah, Scorpion can now combo off of this low. And I can continue that combo. I can Fatal Blow, do whatever. It scales very decently. It is kind of disgusting. I don't think there's a single cameo in the game that allows Scorpion to combo off of his low and do all the stuff that Janet can do on top of that. So this move is really good. Probably the single best reason that I would pick Janet. It's, it's like Sonya on steroids. If your character can do good with Sonya, pick Janet. And finally, we have the part that you're all probably here for, the Sento variation. What makes Janet Cage so unique is this little thing that she does, where she's basically just Kenshi's Sento stance, right? She comes out with you and fights concurrently with you. Um, every time you do an action, as you can see there, even walking takes a little bit of the bar away. Um, it is not nearly, it does not last nearly as long as Sento does. So it's, it's a little bit different in that way. If you hit Janet, she will leave. If you hit Sento, Sento does not leave. If you hit Janet, she, she skedaddles. She does not stay around. So Janet is like a Walmart version of Sento a little bit. Um, that's, that's the way I kind of look at it. Now, the things that Janet Sento can do are actually pretty nuts. Um, what I would recommend that you do for Janet, if you want to use this Sento stance, is to get them into the corner. Because getting them into the corner is a much easier way to keep keep that pressure applied. And unlike Sinto, you can't really like put Sinto be or put Janet behind them and go in front of them and do it that way because they'll just push through her. So um, she's very she's different from Sinto in that regard. But just bear with me here. Here's what you, here's what you got to do: get them into the corner. And the best moves to use in the corner are either one, which is just two high punches. It's pretty good. Does a lot of damage if you keep spamming it. Or if you want to keep yourself safe, go with one of these, and then the second your move ends, hit a three. Hit one of Janet's Sento threes, and it's a mid, so they can't duck it, and it, it keeps you safe. Okay, the, this is the best, the best way I found to use Janet Sento in general, is keeping yourself safe. Getting these disgusting chip damage, uh, chip damage sequences here where you get one of these out and you just keep on doing this it's very hard to deal with it's, it's very annoying to go against in, in, online honestly like i hate fighting janet cage in the corner especially when my opponent knows how to do this um some other some other great things that janet can do uh she has like a launch as well as a uh just like a projectile so if you if you want to zone with Janet, you can do forward one and throw a couple of force balls at them. MK1 Johnny K style. Very nice. Janet also has some very interesting moves that you should pay attention to depending on your character. If your character has an overhead mix-up, Janet has a sweep. Which is really, really disgusting. You can use Janet's sweep right after or right before your overhead and get 50-50 mix-ups in the corner all the time. Uh, Jaina also has a shadow kick, which is okay, I guess. I never use this move ever. Like, maybe if you're zoning with Janet for some odd reason, uh, if you want to do that, be my guest. I think it's completely atrocious, but you can do that. Janet Cage can also extend her time out by holding the cameo button and pressing LT. Or the left trigger button on whatever controller you're using. 
doing this will, as you can see in the left corner there, will extend the time, like, by, I think it's like half the bar. Um, you can do it three times. You can do it three times before it stops filling up. So, like I said, with one of those chips, with one of those chip damage altercations in the corner, if you find a way to continuously refresh her and find a way to continuously uh, just hit, keep the chip damage going while refreshing her, you you have some of the most disgusting chip damage possible in the entire game. Overall, for Janet Sinto, this is the best way I would use it. The only way I would be using this move is get them into the corner, set them up with it. Let me go ahead and show you what Scorpion does. Um, make sure that you're hitting them before you do it. Because it's not an ambush or something. Make sure that they're on the ground or something before you do it. And then from there, you can go for combos or something. From there, you can do whatever you'd like to do with Janet in the corner. You, that's where your creativity comes in. You can be a Kenshi player with any character now. You must be creative and you need to go into practice and learn these combos. I'm going to be honest. They're hard. This is where the most skill comes in with this character. This is where everything becomes a lot harder. If you really want to get the most out of Janet Cage, what you're, you're, you're really not going to be using Sinto that often. I'm going to be straight up. When I use Janet Cage, it's for this move and this move exclusively. Um, this move right here is really like the reason I'm using Janet. That move is disgusting. The damage scaling on it is insane. You can get 42% meterless combos with Scorpion. Holy moly. That's absolutely ridiculous. Janet Cage is, once, once you get all this stuff figured out and once you start to understand how to get the chip strings going and how to actually do damage with her combos, Janet Cage is an absolute nightmare in Combat League. And that is going to do it for today's Janet Cage guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do me a gigantic favor. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All these things will greatly boost my algorithm to help my face get out there. I am a newer Mortal Kombat channel, so anything you can do can help. Happy Easter, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. Thanks for watching.